All right, hello and welcome to this very first playthrough of Loretta. Last time we played through about an hour, hour of the game, we, we finally got the manuscript out of a safe. We killed Kelly and her husband, boyfriend, whatever. Um, and we let Margaret go for some reason. Uh, and now we are, um, I guess, just waiting for the publishers to show up so that we can give them the manuscript and they can give us our $30,000. Did I make it? Oh, no, I don't want to go up there. What am I supposed to do here? I don't want to go in there either. Clock. Looks like that clock shut up for good. What a relief. I got no reason to leave the house. Not today. I didn't expect me to make it, did you? Bite me. Really? Again? I'm gonna sue that damn plumber. Uh oh. Some weird shit went down here last time we were down here. The noise is coming from the hole this time. It's all boarded up. Can't pull them off with my bare hands. I think I saw an axe in the barn. An axe in the barn. God damn music. Why do they always gotta play same me the same melody over and over and over? This'll do. Hope I don't get a splinter. Ugh, what a stench. Johnny was born a healthy pink baby boy. But well, over time his skin started to get all these scabs that peel off, peel off like film. I didn't know what to do. No one could tell me what was happening. He used to take a lot of baths. It was the only time Johnny calmed down and stopped crying. It soothed my heart too. Walter didn't care. For him, it was a game. We were playing family. He got bored real quick. He'd go to these secret political meetings, writer's evenings, school reunions. He never missed a chance to spend a night out of the house, leaving me and the baby all alone. Always. I don't want to touch it. I, I want to leave. Alright, leave. Pretty sure this is going to be the last video. This is a three hour. Oh. oh, Lord! You scared me! What do you want? Who the fuck is this guy? Hey! I'm talking to you! What are you staring at? Y'all shouldn't yell at old Jim Bob, ma'am. He's a mute. So, what do you want? There's a little problem. Y'all go take a look. I don't have time for that. Alrighty, ma'am. We'll keep out of your hair. Come on, Jim Bob. A pair of hillbillies poking their noses around. Best put an end to that sooner rather than later. What was that all about? It's dead. Oh, the radio's dead? Sooner I start, sooner I'll finish. What's inside? I can't see a thing. Something fucked up, probably. Hmm. Sound of brakes? Sounds like a car's pulled up in the driveway. Who's this guy? He wipes his neck with a handkerchief. You've got a very lovely house, ma'am. Don't bother. I can't stand this place either. 
Is this Mr. Harris's house? Oh, this is from the beginning. His parents. And that's what, there's the axe. And the axe wasn't there before. Or it was in the opening, you know what I mean. The clock's ticking again. W what'd you say? Nothing. Ma'am? How long has Mr. Harris been gone for? Why didn't you start off by telling me who it was that hired you? <clears throat> of course. I work for a firm called Wallace & Partners. I represent the interests of Mr. Wallace, your husband. Oh, your husband owes Mr. Wallace a substantial sum of money, ma'am. Did Mr. Harris mention anything about that to you? No, but I've heard about Wallace. And I know he used to be a criminal. You may be right. Who can truly call themselves a saint in today's world? Mr. Wallace has paid back his debt to society and is now worthy enough to live in it. You know he recently donated 30000 for d disabled war vets? If Wallace, if Wallace gives away his money so easily, then what does he want with my husband? We don't have any money. You're wasting your time. You have to understand, ma'am. We wish Walter no harm. We're old friends of his, and we want to help. Think about it. Would I really drive all the way across the country just to collect on some old debt? Mr. Wallace knows Walter's money situation. You see, he was supposed to pass on a particular item to us. An item that belongs to us. What are you talking about? Did Walter ever happen to show you a box? A box? Yes. A wooden one with a lock on it. I don't know what you mean, mister. Why would he ever show me a box? Beads of sweat fall from Chambers' face onto his wrinkled shirt. Can I get you something to drink? Honestly, I was hoping you'd ask. The kitchen's just down the hall. Can't pick the axe up. Okay. What an ugly stuffed animal. Yeah, yeah, I'm taking it off. Loretta sinks into a judgmental silence. Let me ask you, ma'am. Why did you move out here in the first place? Walter wanted to write his book. And did he? Yeah, he's working with the publishing house. With Mr. Schaefer, yes, I know. Mighty interesting, isn't it? First you move from New York, then Walter up and disappears. Maybe he was afraid you were coming. Maybe he was. Tell me, Mrs. Harris. Where do you think your husband might be? Got any ideas? He's in the well. Begging your pardon? So did we kill him too, or what's up? What happened? What is this? Mrs. Harris? The door was open. Is that blood? Loretta? Are you okay? It's Sheriff Carter. I'm coming in. That's blood for sure. Fingers crossed it ain't human. But when am I ever that lucky? What the hell happened here? Too much blood for just one house. Rats. I got this thing about rats. Is there hair in that puddle of blood? Oh, that's where we killed Kelly. There's a storm brewing. So I can't go outside. Okay. I got a bad feeling. Who on God's earth would hang this ugly thing on their wall? We don't even have moose around here. Oh, I never opened that box. <gasps> A three. Jewelry box. Discharge summary of Loretta Lou Harris. Date of birth, 9-9-1909. Sex female. 
Complaints, high blood pressure, headaches, sleep disturbance. Diagnosis, female hysteria. So there's a three there. Oh. Photo's been cut into pieces. I can hardly tell what's on it. Business card. There's a one. Well, looks like Mirrors ain't got no favor in this house. So one, three. Oh, it's locked. Seven years of bad luck. Loretta, are you here? Is it true what they say about Dixie, about Al Jolson? Is that the minstrel fella? Oh, um. Well, we have a one and a three. Dead. Probably got caught in a storm. Can't leave now. Do your job, man. Uh, did I miss another number somewhere? Okay, that's the... So, that's where the number thing is. I got a 1 and a 3. It's red, so I need to make sure I'm not missing it. Anything that's written in red is very easy. Oh! Wait, there's a 3 in the mirror. So three one three. That is a three, right? Yeah. Three one three. So it's it's either one three three. Or it's three one three. There we go. Dear Loretta, I'm sorry I wasn't brave enough to tell you in person. I know you know I'm better in, in, with words than with people, but all my words are dead and I stopped feeling alive years ago. I had to listen to your ceaseless whining for so long, I never forced you to stay, Loretta, but you still wouldn't leave. I was left wondering why. You think you're the only one who has problems? You're used to seeing the bad in people. And worst of all, you have no love for life. You don't love anyone at all. You kept saying that you're scared. In reality, you had no idea what fear is. Fear of not being fulfilled, or failing as a writer, failing as a man. Moving to the farm gave me time to think about things. Many things, Lo. Many things, Lo. What happened to our son is unspeakable. It's too much for me to bear. I'm afraid. I'll publish my novel soon. I'll buy back the house and sell it to Morgan, the local tycoon. I'll leave most of the money to Kelly and then take what's left and leave this place with Margaret. I wish you nothing but happiness, Loretta. Goodbye. Yours sincerely, sincerely Walter. That sounds like a suicide note, but we know he didn't kill himself. This fucking family! Now oh, we've been in there. So is that the door to the basement? Yep. Shit! I hear footsteps. There's someone else here. Is that Kelly? That might be Kelly. There's a storm brewing. Okay, so we can't go that way.
Spider's in my head. Loretta ran away, but not so far. Okay. I gave away the manuscript. Fitzpatrick casually took his checkbook out of his silk jacket pocket and wrote me a nice fat check. I couldn't believe my eyes. Thirty thousand dollars. Life changing money. I gotta admit, Miss Harris, I didn't expect you to come. Hand over the check already, Fitzgerald. Oh. I cashed half of it, took Chambers' car, and headed west. I didn't know where I was going. I just wanted to get away from the farm and never think about it again. I kept driving till the very last sprig of wheat was long behind me. An intoxicating, dry wind blew pillars of road dust into the air. When I finally tired of the road, I rented a room at a roadside motel. Walter, Kelly, Mickey. What did Chambers want? It turns out Destiny didn't want me finding out the answer to that one. Did I even want to find that out, honestly? Margaret? You could say, Margaret, you could say she got off lucky. I only did what I had to. Buried Kelly and Mickey in the backyard. Not too deep, though. They'll probably be found soon. But I'll be over the hill and far, far away by then. Am I a bad person? Maybe. But I became a master of my own fate, Walter. At least they'll publish your book. See? I saved your legacy, at least. I haven't been sleeping well lately. My head's pounding. I got this weird feeling like spiders are scratching the inside of my skull. Ah, uh, I'm tired. Go on, take, gonna go take a shower. Uh-oh. Did we get caught? It looked like... Good evening, ma'am. Will you be joining the festivities? What's the occasion? Oh, you know. But you're early, Loretta. You are in a hurry. And look what came of it. No, ma'am, this won't do at all. Let's try again. Let's try again. Now keep this in mind. We're not the only ones looking for Walter. There are people out there who only want to cause him and his family harm. I'm staying at the Twin Oaks Motel. If Walter happens to show up, you be sure to call me. Here's my card. Your husband's in serious danger, but you and I can help him. Together. Okay. So we went backwards? What are we doing here? Stupid moose head. What are we doing here? Hello? Oh, there we go. Okay. Mrs. Harris? Good morning, how are you doing? Patrick Fitzgerald, at your service. I represent the legal interests of the Atlantic Press. We spoke on the phone. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Can I get you anything? No, thank you. Ah, yes, I don't trust that vending machine food, either. Well, Mrs. Harris, I have to admit, that letter of yours was, uh, unexpected. I hope you understand the scale of the trust my firm has in your husband. I was sent out here from Mississippi, you know. We expect Mr. Harris to reappear soon, of course. And then we'll all learn the, the secret of this mystical disappearance. Before that, I have a couple of questions. Remind me, what novel are we talking about here? You don't know? I do, but I'd like to be sure. The Straw Bull. Have you read it, by the way? No. I ain't a fan. Oh, I feel you there. I'm not a big reader, either. Fantastic. Reddit notices his soft hands. She realizes it's the first time she's seen a man with a manicure. In that case, I suggest we call it quits on the coffee. 
You hand over the manuscript and I make some calls. We can get contracts rip written up and you do have the manuscripts with you, right? That ain't gonna work, mister. No contracts, not this time. I thought I made my point very clear in the letter. Your point? That's right, 30000 A check is fine if you can't do cash. A check, huh? Listen, Fitzpatrick. Fitzgerald. If you want the novel, then you're gonna have to pay me. For a moment, a look of incandescent rage flashes across Fitzgerald's clean-shaven reptilian face. After a pause, a smile returns with a sparkle. Well, all right. We'll play your game. No contracts. I can even write that check for you right now. But I gotta see the manuscript first. The manuscript's at home, locked up in a safe. Fitzgerald takes a slurp of his coffee. Did you come here by car? Jeez, this coffee is lousy. Yeah, I drove here. The journey home usually took 25 to 30 minutes. Oh, but with Fitzgerald's high-speed motor, we got there in 15. He really put the pedal to the metal and seemed quite comfortable doing it, like he was used to it. You couldn't make that man hush up for love or money. His lips were flapping the whole time, talking about weather, sports, his work over in Mississippi, Louisiana, singing the praises of New Orleans cuisine. So, 30 grand, that's quite the pretty sum. I'd say it's fair. Looking at you, I get the impression your company ain't short on money. Hey, so long as folk want to keep reading about people sleeping with and murdering each other, then your husband, myself, and even you will be set for life. No, it can't be. The safe's open. I don't get it. Someone, someone stole my manuscript. Oh, that's swell. Chambers. Well, Mrs. Harris, looks like we're done here. No, wait. I know who stole it. I know where it is. I'll get it back. That's certainly an entertaining story, Loretta. You've given me quite the performance. It was an incredible intimidation act at first. But now you've evolved into Broadway. I wouldn't be surprised if Mrs. Har Mr. Harris jumped out from behind that curtain and sang us a tune next. No, please. You've already wasted too much of my time. I'm heading back to Mississippi, and I'll be sure to advise Mr. Schaefer away from any further dealings with you or your husband, wherever he may be. Cocksucker, what do you know? Oh, shit. I, I, didn't, I didn't realize that was the murder button. Fitzgerald's dead. Okay, I need to... I need to read. Cut! Are you out of your fucking mind? This is a $400 suit! Dumb cut! Uh. Ah! Fitzgerald's sudden passing wouldn't do me any favors, but I couldn't help myself. Seems like a single step onto this path means there ain't no coming back from it. But there was still a chance, a glimmer of hope, that I could still get the manuscript before Fitzgerald's body was found. Fog and rain again, I raced down the slick road in a frenzied, frenzied rage, heading to the motel that Chambers had written on his business card. Fat-ass moron with rotten teeth. He must have stolen the manuscript while I was in the basement. But why? How could he have known the combination? Who is this Mr. Wallace he's working for? And why do they need my manuscript? The rain soon gave away to hail that fell so hard that I considered stopping to chain the tires. I almost missed it, as I struggled to keep the car on the road. The neon sign winked in the darkness. Twin Oaks. Here it is. If I find Chambers, I find the manuscript. The, part, the porter ain't here. Lucky you, Loretta. Hmm, Chambers ain't on the list. He must have used another name. Damn, but which one? Uh, oh, here we go. Angel? I don't think that's his style. Neff? That's a weird name. Two women sharing a room? Too fancy. This one ain't even, even a man's name. Another woman's name. Sounds like a couple of plain Janes from the Midwest. Hmm, this one looks familiar. No, <laughs> Norman Bates. I think I went to school with this guy. Chicken Scratch. Jack Torrance. That's the guy from The Shining. So is there not... Oh, shit. Charles F. Banks. Charles F. Banks. Frank Chambers. Bingo.
It's an anagram. No, it isn't. Charles uh, Chambers has an M in it. Charles F. Banks does not have an M in it. It's like he's in room 12. Any change? All right. Oh, rooms. Okay. Vents go through all the rooms. I thought maybe it was a pipe that I could take as a weapon. Chambers! You in there? Open up! When it pulls on the handle, it's locked. Of course it is. Quarter. This could come in handy. Why? Hey! Where's my newspaper? Come on, you dumb bucket of bolts! Give me back my money! Well, can I help you with something? What happened? I, I think I lost my room key. To tell you the truth, I lost my room key. What's your last name? Mrs. Banks, room 12. Mr. Banks came alone. Who are you? Look, I know my husband is in there with my cousin! Oh, ma'am. I wish I could help, but your husband paid for the room fair and square. I can't give you the key. I'm sorry. Uh, we're gonna have to murder this old man. I mean, we're just straight up murdering people left and right now. May I borrow a newspaper? I tried putting money in the machine, but nothing worked, and I can't get it back. You're welcome to it. Ain't a single thing of interest in there anyway, aside from the baseball. Bertha warned me, don't bet on the Reds, you old fool. What am I going to do with a newspaper? Bulky coffee machine. Paradise for roaches. Oh, gross. Excuse me, ma'am. That room's for staff only. Need to find some way to distract the porter. Hmm. Okay. Not sure what we're trying to do here. Room service, how may I help you? Hey, there's a fountain pen spawn down in my toilet. You gotta send someone to room five and fast. What in the I'm on my way. Hopefully that'll distract him for a while. Fountain pen? It's the best you could come up with? That did the trick. It won't be gone for long though. Key to room 11. Better than nothing, I suppose. You can't get the key to room 12. What the hell are you doing, Loretta? I'm lucky the real Mr. Mrs. Woodhouse ain't here. Jesus. I ain't Amelia Earhart. By the time I got used to it. Protestant Bible. They put one of these in every room. I don't really believe in God, or rather, I don't want to, given all that's happened. I can feel the air moving around my feet. Move on here, yeah. A vent! It probably connects to the room the room to chambers. I might be able to turn the screws if I had a coin or something. Damn it all! Oh shit. Empty. Fuck. 
Should have kept the coin. There's nothing else to do in here. So what do I do now? Oh, right. I forgot about that. I forgot I was supposed to do that. It smells damp in here. Meh. Aha! There you are! Here we go. I swear, this is the only time I'm doing it again. Chambers, you there? Suitcase is locked. I can't open it. Crumpled newspapers. I've seen these in detective movies. They put these down so they can hear people sneaking toward the bed. Who or what was Chambers afraid of? Oh, for the love of... This ain't the time to fix my makeup. This must be the murder weapon. Looks like somebody slashed Chambers with a straight razor. Better not touch it. Chambers, what a stench. How long has he been here? I think I'm gonna puke. Chambers' fat fingers look like bloody sausages. It looks like they're holding on to something. Too old for this shit. Bad news, boss. Harris ain't here, just his wife. It's hard to say whether she's just acting a fool or if she really is one. If she really is one. The only thing I can say for sure is she's gone a is he's gone AWOL. This job ain't easy. Pigs are already making a mess of things, but I've got one last lead. Margaret Hatfield, a neighbor. The widow that Walter had been sleeping with. I'll pay her a visit. Tomorrow. Oh yeah, I think I'm being followed. I'll call again from a payphone later. It was clear from Chambers' strange telegram that neither he nor Mr. Wallace were interested in the manuscript. They were chasing down Walter for an old, unpaid debts. And it looks like Chambers had some of his own, too. Guess he'll never repay him now. Okay. I was more than a little confused. Who stole my manuscript? If it wasn't Chambers? Am I asking too many questions? I ain't getting any answers. I'm a simple woman. I got simple desires. Why everything's falling apart? Well, the one time I decided to try my luck. The storm wasn't letting up, so I headed home. Must have got a sum of Chambers' blood on me. Some corrosive thoughts were eating away at my head from the inside. Black raindrops rolled off of my wet hair. Gas light flickered in the kitchen. Loretta sniffs at the air. Something smells weird. Like someone's smoking cigars. It's coming from the kitchen. Give me just a second. Alright, we're going to the kitchen. We gotta be getting close at this point. How did you get in here? Take a seat. <laughs> Why doesn't anyone just do as they're told? Listen, if it's money you want, shut the fuck up. 
you will speak when spoken to. Where's Harris? Who the hell are you? Oh god, okay. I'll ask again. Where is Harris? I... I don't know. Where's the box? What box? Quit playing dumb. If I hear one more lie come out of your mouth, I'll pierce your eye with a needle. Now where's the box? Why? It's in the yard. What was that? Speak up. It's in the in the red barn. The barn? Where exactly? It's in a big chest. The stranger sighs. Guess that means I'm getting wet again. You better pray that I find it. Listen, I don't know what... Quit squirming. Okay. Oh. Wait. No, 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 no. I can give these a try, but I gotta be careful I don't break them. I only have three. Okay. Yes! He must be out in the barn. How'd she learn how to pick a lock like that? I mean, she picked it in no time. Probably got a gun. He's got a gun. There's no way he'll miss from that distance. I need to sneak up on him and try to stay in the shadows when the lightning strikes. Okay. Whoa, what? Nasty bitch, how'd you die? Okay, so that's a, that's a fail state. you what's happening there's something in, in the inside pocket a revolver with a full barrel what are you you gonna shoot me scumbag right inside pocket a cigar damn not another cigar Jack Smith, Private Security, Tom Winters, Insurance Agent, Sam Plymouth, Department of Health. Who are you? We ain't done yet, buddy. You and I are going for a little walk. Oh, wait. Oh, you're awake. Thought you died already. I'm bleeding. W what are you? Hold on a minute. Let me get up. Any last words? I said, wait a minute, damn it! Want a needle in your eye, do you? What, not feeling so tough anymore? Beating up a woman in her own home? L listen, I got nothing on you. Uh, I just needed Harris. I told you he's dead and rotting in the well behind you, and you're gonna keep him company. Now give me your name. L let me go. You don't want to be a murderer, do you? You don't know nothing about me, mister. Start talking or I'll put a bullet in your knees. Okay, sweetheart. Flattery won't get you anywhere. Okay, okay, okay. Just relax. Look at me. I'm not going anywhere. Why did you kill Chambers? So was it you who killed Chambers? Dang, my ears are ringing. Talk! Yeah, I killed the fat fuck, but he had it coming. Why? 
He had dirt on you or something? Him, Wallace, and your husband. They were all in cahoots. Went and violated the Lindbergh Law. You mean they kidnapped someone? What are you saying? They kidnapped a child and tortured it to death. You ever see the name Nancy Olson in the news? The oil baron's daughter? Of course I remember. It was printed everywhere. The ransom was paid, but the girl never, was never found. And she never will be. Well, she might. In some field somewhere with her head cut off, that is. The family eventually learned Wallace was involved. Something to do with the union. So they hired me. You're lying. Hey, Wallace confessed everything to me before he croaked. Sold his little errand boys all the way down the river. Enough talk. Time to die. You know, even if you are telling the truth, that's Walter's problem, not mine. Wait, wait, you got it all wrong. No, I got it right. I don't give two shits anymore. No, wait! this a wheat plate We play. Margaret's house is much like her own, yet still so much nicer. Paint was peeling off the walls, and the fence didn't sag. She and Clarence didn't have as much land, but they managed it by themselves. They didn't rent out, it rent out to farmers. Everything, everything this filthy thieving bitch had was better than anything I had. Still, she decided to take away the last thing that was mine. The chance to change my life. Margaret took the manuscript? Is that what we're getting at? It's hard to describe the amount of anger I was feeling when I kicked her door down. I busted into her house hollering her name, but got no answer. Photographs of Margaret and Clarence hung on the walls. There was some lithograph of a sprig of wheat in a dusty frame. Water dripped from my wet hair onto the muzzle of, muzzle of the revolver, and the wind blew the sweet scent of flowers through the room. Margaret! Brand new gramophone. I uh, thought maybe I could do something to distract her. I don't know. I didn't think you knew how to read. You! Give the manuscript back, Margaret. You're a monster! They'll throw you in the guest chamber for this! They might. But you'll end up with a hole in that thick skull of yours. Now give me the damn manuscript! You killed Walter! You killed him! What for? Some lousy scraps of paper! You'll die for him, too, if you ain't careful. Now, enough talking. Then why? Was it revenge? Because Walter was leaving you? Life is much more than men, Loretta. As if a whore like you would know. Give me the manuscript. No way I'm handing it over to you. Get out of my house. You want to shoot? Then shoot. Add another crime to the list. One more is one less, right? Prove you're not... You've got no humanity left in you. I ain't giving you the book. You, didn't des you don't deserve his work. Walter was right. Right about what? Your son, Loretta. What was his name? Keep him out of this, you whore. Walter told me, but I, I didn't believe him. I just couldn't. But you killed him too, didn't you? Shut up, Margaret. You drowned your own baby. Shut the fuck up. What kind of person does that? Now let's shoot her. You've got no idea how long I've waited for this. Goodbye, Margaret. That's enough, Miss Harris! Oh, shit. What's the sheriff's voice? That's enough, Miss Harris! Drop the gun! Margaret, Bill, thank God! Sheriff? The redhead stole my manuscript. Arrest her! I found Fitzgerald's body, Loretta. I found the girl and her fella, too. Kelly? Oh, my God! It's over. Drop the gun now or I'll shoot. 
What are you waiting for, Bill? Shoot! It's time to stop, Loretta. Stop? Don't be a fool. What's waiting for me if I stop here? No, I've gone too far. Yeah, fuck it. Let's shoot Margaret. I pulled the trigger and ran. Lightning strikes twice. Loretta missed, but the sheriff didn't. Oh no. I hate achievements that spoil it. Ears of wheat, wet wheat slapped at my face and legs. I'd missed. Something whistled past my ear with a crack. My lungs were greedy for air. My feet sank into the sodden black dirt. Another crack and a pain in the back of my head. I didn't want to run no more. Then something pushed me to the ground. I collapsed into the wet mud. How foolish. It's cold. Walter. Johnny. My little boy. Mama's on her way. So we died. I mean, hand over the gun. They didn't let me... Oh, she didn't die. They didn't let me die. I've been having weird dreams lately. In, in them, human bodies melt like wax brought to a fire. I, I wake up several times a night. My throat runs dry with thirst. My thoughts seem to run dry, too, like a river or a well. My forehead and armpits grow sticky with sweat, and I can't get my words out straight. I ain't sure what I'm saying at all or what's being said to me, but I eventually open my eyes. The bright ceiling lamp makes me want to puke. They never turn the lights off in the cells. The little blue ring looks like an artificial sun, and its rays feel heavier than anything I've ever known. So you're in an insane asylum? Yeah. Good afternoon, Loretta. How are you feeling today? Can you tell me why you bit Dr. Miller? <laughs> that wasn't very polite. I can't help but worry that you'll bite me next. Keep worrying. Cigarette? I thought smoking wasn't allowed in here. I like to make an exception for our regular guests. What? I need to run some tests and check the state of your bones, so I'm going to schedule you for an x-ray, Loretta. Who are you? I suspect there might be some damage to your bone marrow. Do you happen to know what neurosyphilis is? Okay, well, it doesn't matter now. How's your leg feel? Any pain? With the drugs y'all are making, with the drugs y'all are making me take, nothing hurts no more. Nothing hurts no more. Well, maybe you should have hammered in that fucking nail, though. Walter played a cruel joke on you. Got you from the grave, that bastard. No. What do you? What do you mean, no? Come on, it's not like you don't. Ha you didn't have any fun, right? Although I can't quite wrap my head around one thing. Why'd you chase her? Why not just grab the manuscript? The thought didn't occur to me. Didn't occur to you? You ever think about what's waiting for you, Harris? The chair? The gas chamber? Or maybe just a rope? Hell. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> that is the end, apparently. Alright, cool. Uh, Alright. Alright. Wow, we did it. Okay. First things first. The uh, bottom center of the screen says that we have beaten 36 games in 2024. And uh, 483 since we started doing this in 2020. Those numbers are now outdated. We've now beaten 37 games in 2024 and 484 since we started doing this. Let's go. Okay, let's talk about Loretta. Um, so this isn't, so what this game is, is it's a point and click-esque murder mystery, maybe not much of a mystery, but it's a, it's a, a murder psychological thriller. I remember seeing in the, um, like in uh, some description somewhere that it was what's this I don't know Walter what is this I have a bad feeling about this maybe we can still go back go back where to New York oh come on baby I promise you you're gonna love it here the nature the air it's beautiful besides what's the worst that could happen okay is that it all right cool um, and, oh, Jesus. 
And um, so, uh, so it's a uh, it's a psychological thriller. I, I I saw the description at some point somewhere that said it was like a Hitchcockian, very Hitchcock esque, and that is true. It's definitely there's something about it that is very um, uh, it, psychological thriller, but without really going overboard showing you too much. It's definitely one of those things where it's like less is more. You know, it allows you to use your imagination some at some points where it's like you know, you, it could show you something really grotesque, but it doesn't. Um, it, it just kind of allows you to use your imagination kind of in that Hitchcocking kind of way. I definitely see that in this. Um, and it was um, the pixel art did uh did lend itself well to that type of story um, because pixel art's kind of that way too. It kind of is a less is more kind of a thing, you know. It doesn't show you every in photographic detail, every little thing. You kind of gotta, even when it does show you things, it's not like it's in super gory detail, right? So it does still allow you to use your imagination again a little bit within that framework, which is cool. I like that for this kind of story. It reminded me that particular part of it reminded me a little bit of Signalis. Signalis is a survival horror game that's got a very similar pixel art style and kind of does the same kind of thing uh, when, when it comes to the, the more grotesque stuff that it shows. Uh, so I liked that. I thought that was cool. Um, there were some a couple of parts that were genuinely disturbing. Um, some of the imagery, because of what we already talked about, was pretty disturbing here, here and there. And uh, just the story of this woman... Um, without spoiling anything, um, it gets pretty insane. The story is definitely interesting. The story is very good. It's very well written. It's not voiced at all because it's all text, but it's what's written is well done. It's well written. The characters seem very fleshed, like good. They're good characters. It's, it's well done. It's believable. Um, um, as far as downsides go, um, there's not really a lot to say negative about this game. I, there is one thing, and it's more of a logistical thing that really bugged me, and that is the checkpoint system and the autosave system. It's um, I, I learned this the hard way, but apparently it doesn't save except for at the beginning of every chapter, which is bad enough, which means if you want to stop mid-chapter, you're just going to have to play the rest of the chapter again. But even worse... The game doesn't tell you when a new chapter is starting or ending. So if you want to back out of the game, it doesn't. It just gives you one confirmation screen. Do you want to leave? That's all it says. It doesn't say unsaved progress will be lost. It doesn't say your last save was 10 minutes ago or anything like that. It just says, do you want out? And if you hit yes, when you start it back up, you are going back to the beginning of the chapter. It might have been two minutes ago. could have been 20 or 30 minutes ago. At one point, I did lose 20 minutes of progress because I backed out, thinking, eh, this game probably has a fairly frequent autosave system. Why, if, it's gonna, if it asks me if I want to back out and it doesn't say anything about unsaved progress being lost, I'm probably safe, right? Almost every, all, virtually every other game I've ever played, if it doesn't say unsaved progress will be lost, then you, you don't have anything to lose when you back out. Not so with this game. Uh, so that was highly annoying, and it's easily fixable. They can either input more autosaves throughout the chapters instead of just at the beginning of every chapter, or at the very fucking least, they could tell you when a chapter's starting and then say when you back out, are you sure you want to quit? All, all progress since the start of the chapter will be lost. That's all they have to do. The more frequent autosaves will be better, but that's the bare minimum, and they couldn't even do that. That really bummed me out. I, that I, it caused me to have to replay a significant portion of one, about 20 minutes of the game, which in a game that's only two and a half hours long, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of the game. So um, I hated that. Um, that's an easy fix. I think they could patch that uh, and fix that, but whatever. Um, Outside of that, I mean, the, the pixel art style was really cool. I, I loved the imagery in the game. I thought the story was good. I mean, all that other stuff was fine. There's, as far as, like, the actual... The way the game looks, sounds, and plays, I don't really have any complaints. The only other thing that's going to affect the ranking that I have negative to say about it is not a critique on the game. It's just point-and-click games are, like... 
if I had to make a list of like the top five games that are like my least favorite genres, point and click adventure would probably be on there. This is, I think, if you want to officially categorize this as a point and click adventure, this is the only one I've ever beaten because I've played several others, especially a long time ago when I was doing more of like my alphabetical stuff and I was playing a lot more random stuff. I've attempted to play multiple other point and clicks and I've never gotten through any of them. So if you want to count this as a point and click, which I think is a fair assessment, then this is the only point and click I've ever beaten. Uh, and it's and it's very slow paced. It's very, you know, oh, you missed something in the bathroom. Well, you got to walk back up to the bathroom. And it's going to take you a couple minutes to get there. You know, this is that kind of thing. It's, it's very slow paced. Um it's not exactly a lot of action, combat, RPG elements. It's none of that. So, But for what it is, I thought it was quite good. I think this is probably the best point and click I've ever played. Is a, a fair statement. It's not saying much because I haven't been a big fan of that genre historically. But I did enjoy this game. I did enjoy this game. It's not going to rank super high because of just the nature of the simplicity of the game and how short and simple it was at, really at the end of the day. But... For what it was, I thought it did. I thought it did a great job filling that niche. What it is, it's like whoever the person that made this game, and think this is a one person or two person team. They said this is the game we want to make. It's going to fill this very specific niche. This is what it's going to do. It's not going to have a lot of bells and whistles. It's not going to overexert itself. It's going to do this one. Tell this one very specific story. You're going to have some branching narrative options. There's probably this probably game probably has multiple endings. I did get a, a distinct impression playing this that things could have gone very differently. Um, I don't know that for sure, but I I assume that that's true based on the way that it went. Um, and uh, because I definitely got one of the bad endings. And so I like that. I like that choose your own adventure kind of a feel to it. It didn't have a ton of that because there's not really a lot of fail states, but there were a couple of times that I messed up and it would put, boot me back. It happened twice. So, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was, it was a good game. It was definitely worth the $12 that I caught. The, and that's at launch. I think it was on sale at launch because of Game Pass, what Xbox Ultimate, whatever. But I paid eleven ninety nine for it. It was absolutely worth eleven ninety nine, no doubt about that. So, uh, if you like narrative stuff, if you like point and click stuff, if you like just like a good murder mystery or like a good, if the idea of like a Hitchcockian psychological thriller that takes two and a half to three hours to be in a pixel art style sounds appealing to you, whatever you're picturing when I say that. That's about what that's about right. There are some twists and turns that will surprise you, but at its core, that's what it is. That's what it is. And uh, I did enjoy it. All right, last order of business. Loretta, it's been fun. Thank you for allowing us to play you, but we are now going to delete you from our console and never play you again. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Loretta. All right, that's it for Loretta. Um, just brief roadmap for the next few days in case you're interested. Actually, I usually always say that, but I don't really know what I'm going to play next. I have some decisions to make. I have some decisions to make. I'm going to play some retro game. And then Harold Halibut comes out on 16th. And then Tales of Kinzera Zal on the 23rd. And between those, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I've got a lot of different choices. Probably something old. All right, uh, that's it. If you're still here and you watch the whole video, or even if you watch the very end, thank you. I appreciate you. That means a lot to me. I will see you on the next one, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day.